Food is a central part of human culture, and out of all the foods in the world, burgers are one of the best. Today, I will be covering burgers from around the world. Without further ado, let's begin. First off, we have one of the most clickbaited food items that has ever existed, that being the Japanese hamburger with a jet black bun. This burger was first released as a limited time Halloween item in 2014 by Burger King. Not only were the buns and cheese dyed black, but the ketchup contained squid ink to dye it black too. It's a shame I'll never be able to try the amazing squid ink and ketchup flavor combo. This isn't the only example of colored buns, however. According to this random website, they're trendy in Mumbai, India. Could this be a complete lie? Yes, but that would be the most useless and inconsequential lie ever told. On a side note, this red burger looks like a straight 11 out of 10 on the yum scale. I want to eat it. Now on the opposite side of the world, not even close, it's about 3,800 miles off, we have an absolute monstrosity that was created at the otherwise amazing In-N-Out. This is the 100 layer hamburger. That's right, nothing else besides two buns, 100 patties, and a whole cow's worth of cheese. This was, or is, a secret menu burger. Some years back, someone found out that by asking for a burger with X amount of patties, they would just make it for you. Of course, this could only lead to disaster with some bozo asking for 100 patties. I'm not sure whether or not this can still be done, as the only source on this thing is intended to be used in primary school math courses to teach kids about linear functions. Before we venture outside of America once more, I gotta mention the ramen burger. This thing was created by the New York-based Kaizo Shimamoto and uses condensed ramen for buns. Hey Shimamoto, if I may suggest, here's a catchphrase I came up with for your burger. The ramen burger. I know you'd love to indulge in luxury, but you're still a college student after all, so slow your horses. Weirdly, Time Magazine put the ramen burger at number 12 on their 17 most influential burgers of all time list. I guess they really missed the mark this time. <laughs> now if you will, let me take you on an international burgery journey, starting with... What I'm about to show you has been called the Chinese hamburger, but I don't buy this big burger propaganda in the slightest. This is the Rujamo, which consists of two pieces of yeast flatbread sandwiching minced pork that has sat in a mix of over 20 different spices for hours. There's also based and halal pilled versions that use beef or lamb instead of pork. If you, for some odd reason, think this counts as a hamburger, then you can go ahead and call it the oldest one because it's straight out of the 3rd century BCE. You 2nd century BCE kids would never understand. Honestly, it doesn't even seem half bad, but this is a video about burgers, so let's move on to real burgers. Returning once more to Japan, we have the rice burger. Not only are the buns made of rice, but the patty itself is too. Since its creation in 1987, it has since caught on in East Asia, especially in the real Korea. Uh, I mean, the Republic of Korea. Over there, they add in stir-fried kimchi, tuna, and mayonnaise, which makes much more sense than a glorified rice bowl. Yet another Japanese burger chain, Lateria, has a more sensible take on burgers. Lateria saw the hamburger and said, that's pretty cool and all, but what if we made it out of squid or tofu and shrimp? And they did just that. Like the rice burger, they've also caught on in East Asia, and take a wild guess as to who decided they have the expertise to add on to it. That's right, South Korea. I mean, uh, the Republic of Korea? They decided to add marinated pork or beef slices and kimchi onto Lateria's burgers. I don't know about you, but I'm all Japaned out for today. And which country is the most geographically similar to Japan? February 4th, 1899. Fighting between the US and the Philippines starts. Then on July 2nd, 1902, the US won and took over the Philippines. The Philippines stayed under US rule until 1946, but because of the whole being controlled by America thing, they picked up on some totally rad American stuff. The most important, most influential thing they picked up was, of course, hamburgers. They saw hamburgers and thought, sheesh, no cap, this is for real, bussin', let's put this on blast. And that's how Jollibee was born. If you've never heard of Jollibee, you're actually not missing out on anything. It's McDonald's but Filipino with some weird changes such as more local burger variations and replacing the side of fries with a bowl of rice. It's one of the only examples of very popular burger chains that aren't American, and it's also the only one I no longer have anything to say about, so pack up your bags and please don't forget to pack your taste buds this time because we're going to... We've all heard the joke, right? How do you know if someone's vegan? Oh, they'll let you know alright. If that's the case, then I gotta let the vegans know about India. You see, Hinduism and Islam are both very prevalent in India, so beef and pork are out of the question. 
Therefore, Indian burgers usually use vegetable patties or chicken. The vada pav is the most common variant, which has two bread buns and a deep fried fritter of potato and spices. Up until I researched this stuff for the video, I had only heard about the word fritter preceded by apple, and that would have been the most disgusting burger I can think of. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Between these vegan heaven burgers and Mumbai thing for colored buns, India may soon become the Silicon Valley of burgers. However, one place that won't is... Three words. McDonald's, eggs, and fried chicken. That's five words. I really don't have much to say about Malaysia, but I thought I'd be committing an injustice larger than your mom if I didn't mention what they've done with burgers. For whatever reason, Malaysians have added eggs and a fried chicken onto their otherwise completely normal McDonald's burgers. I think that speaks for itself. The only way to cleanse the world of this mistake is a new transition, so take it away! Diverging from Asia, we set our sights on Europe. I wonder what Denmark has in store for us. Ah, I see, they have something called the Bof Sandwich. More like the barf sandwich. I mean, look at this. Reading this ingredients list is a complete mess. Two sesame seed buns, a beef patty, pickled cucumber, pickled onions, fried onions, and or soft onions, pickled red beets, mustard, ketchup, remoulade, European sauce similar to tartar sauce, and excessive amounts of brown gravy. From what I've gathered, this burger is the burger equivalent of a 90 car pilot. Not surprising coming from a place that's barely able to speak coherently, let alone make a burger. Even worse, a variant of this thing called the... Nope, I'm not pronouncing that. Replaces the beef with pork, adds red cabbage, mayonnaise, pork rinds, and pork rind garnish. By itself, this burger is already more disgusting than the barf sandwich, but they even managed to give it a worse name. I think we've given Denmark's burgers enough attention, so let's check out what Eastern Europe has in store. The Plish Kavika is not only the most stereotypically Eastern European sounding thing ever, but barely even a burger. The Plish Kavika itself is in fact not a burger, but a patty mixture of pork, beef, lamb, veal, onions, lard, multiple spices, and on occasion breadcrumbs. I guess they just had a hard time deciding on their favorite meat, so they went with all of them at the same time. One day, however, some guy decided that this wasn't enough, and decided to slap a piece of bread above and below it, creating a quote unquote burger. Personally, I think it looks pretty bad, but after witnessing the dumb Dane's devilishly devious derivation of burgers, it can't even compare. All right. There's only one more burger that I want to cover, and out of everything you've seen today, this may be the weirdest. Put on your wooden shoes, because this last burger comes from the fanciful land of... This burger is not particularly flashy, it doesn't use any weird ingredients, it's not overflowing with disgusting excess, and it's not entirely made of one thing. However, there's one tiny, minuscule, almost unnoticeable detail that separates this burger from the rest. You see, this burger is lamb grown. Cobbled together from cow cells turned stripped of muscles turned beef patty, this thing is a Frankenstein's monster of burgers. A scientific you to our modern world, an absolute travesty of our modern day. Thanks for nothing, Netherlands. You have truly forsaken us all. This video was originally intended to be a 4th of July video, hence the burger theme, however I got the idea for this video too late for that to come to fruition. That doesn't matter though, since I think this video came out well regardless. Remember, Denmark sucks and you should never become friends with a Dane. Bye bye, Wolfram Pack Amigo thingies!